You guys, I'm kind of freaking out right now. I'm about to drive in the snow for maybe like, I don't know, the first time ever. I've literally never in my life done this before. And I'm kind of wondering, <laughs> how'd I get into this situation again? Hey, I'm Kristen. I've been traveling the world solo for over 10 years, road tripping, adventuring, and hitchhiking around the globe. Then I met my life partner, got pregnant, and I'm enjoying the last few months that I get to do this whole thing by myself. Okay, so basically this trip has been in the works for a really long time. First, it was supposed to be me and Garrett. Garrett, who grew up in Massachusetts and knows how to drive in the winter. And then it was gonna be my friend Alex, but then, you know, with COVID and everything, things just kept getting pushed and pushed. And so I thought, okay, Mama's got another mouth to feed soon. I want to do as many projects as I can while I'm still in my second trimester, which is rapidly fit, like coming to a close here. So yeah, wish me luck, because I pretty much have to head out like now. Am I even doing this right? How thorough am I meant to be? I brush it off and it falls right back on. Now what? I mean, it's like legitimately coming down. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this, I guess. Oh gosh, I'm in like really deep snow right now. Oh my gosh, don't hit anything. Okay. Everyone who is like from Quebec or New England or anywhere snowy right now is probably laughing so hard at me. I'm from Southern California. We don't get this weather. <laughs> I think if I just drive slow and like Pray to all the gods of all the religions that I don't slide. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm on the bridge. Okay, I did it. Check me out. <laughs> I ride motorbikes in Southeast Asia on sand and dirt all the time. But this, this is freaky. Ooh, nice. We are down to like tar or whatever this is. It's really been fine so far. There's two people who got frustrated with how slow I was going and just passed me, which is fine. Well, I am slipping and sliding on this road. But this is the road I'm basically staying on, so I don't have to worry about this for too long. Oh my goodness. Your destination is on the left. Oh, thank God. Just arrived. He's gonna take me to my yurt. Home sweet home? Yes. Look at this beautiful yurt. I didn't expect it to be this cool. So this is Guy. He's the creator. <laughs> he made this table himself. Yes. Did you actually build all of this? All of this, yes. What? It has a full kitchen as well. I mean, I, usually I would not, not expect it to be so well equipped inside of a yurt like this. That's pretty cool. This is an old sewing machine. That is so cool. Now I appreciate this table he made even more. composting toilet. I've used these plenty of times before. It's really good to reduce your reliance on water. He avoids having to have a septic system this way too. Sometimes it's wood chips I've used. This looks like some kind of mulch and you just put it in after you do your deed. It doesn't smell at all. I mean, I'm like crouching right next to it. <laughs> you guys, this is one of those places where you look at it online and the pictures just don't do it justice. I mean, it is so calming and beautiful just looking out here at the view. And the little details in here, the fact that he built it himself, I mean, I could just tell when I walked in <laughs> that it had a personal, very personal touch. It looks and smells pretty new to me as well. I mean, all of this wood looks really new. Everything is super clean in here. It's definitely got modern touches. I mean, I can charge my phone here. Also, even though this looks like a classic, apparently it's a Bluetooth <laughs> type of radio so I can play my music here. Modern coffee maker, of course. This is my heat source. He is building a group of showers this spring, 
but for now if I want to shower I can just go down to his main house and he can give me a ride on that like cool buggy thing and then I would be able to shower there but for now I just want to enjoy this coziness because it's beautiful and wonderful and really nice. Extreme sport mode. Engaged. Snowshoeing with a cantaloupe taped to my friend. <laughs> lovely snowshoe. So it's not just this uh, kamuk that is on the property. There's a bunch of yurts and stuff too. So guys gonna take me to take a look at those. I like your uh, theater seats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. So you've got a level up there and then this pulls out into a bed too. So a whole family can stay in here. If Garrett were here, we would be playing this. Anyone else out there play this? Cute. Oh, and this is a Murphy bed here? Yeah, exactly. Oh, cool. So we're saving some space. Yep. Oh, neat. I like it. Yeah. Cool checking the other yurts out on this property. It's also really cool that he built pretty much everything himself, uh, he and his son, so it's a family business as well. One thing that I think is a good thing, really, there's no Wi-Fi here and my phone doesn't really have connection so I have to like slow down and just enjoy the evening and it's super peaceful like not a sound anywhere. I started to feel actually before this like I was on my phone way too much like before I would take enough trips where I would be completely off the grid like on a dive boat for a few days or backpacking for like a week plus and it's been unfortunately a while since I've done that and that used to be my time to just completely disconnect and relax. Wow this feels so nice and I feel like I'm not as calm as I was pre-pandemic which probably all of us feel that way but <laughs> I feel like I have way more need now to disconnect and not be so addicted to this thing. <laughs> Okay, so let's try this whole fondue thing. I've never uh, made my own fondue before. I can't even think of all that many times I've had fondue. I know it's sad, but uh, this is gonna be like with broth and meat. Yeah, let's try it. I also have some cheesy bread here, so I guess I just put that in this toaster here. This looks sinfully delicious. I arranged the veggies on a cutting board because I think I'm fancy. So here we have a whole bunch of meats. This is chicken. There's like elk in here and probably beef and it's all from this local uh, butcher. So that's pretty cool. of the broth, which is really nice. Let's get a mushroom in there. I love mushrooms. I guess I could do broccoli too. Why not? Why not? I got lots of forks. It's just me. Okay, there's a bit of a learning curve with this. <laughs> you need to have multiple forks going at once, I've learned, and you need to like take the food out and let it cool lest you burn your mouth. But it's good, it like takes on the flavor of the broth that you're cooking it in. Mm. And it's fun to do it too. I don't know if you can tell, it's all steamy in here. Ugh. So nice, so relaxing, having fondue in the yurt. Kristen could see me now. 
party animal. For real though, when was the last time you like sat down and did a puzzle? It was nice. My daily max now. Don't you fondly remember the days when I almost OD'd in on coffee in New Mexico? Look at how dark this is. Oh, this is so cozy. I would love to just stay here. <laughs> But actually, I'm really, really, really excited about the next thing I'm gonna do, so I'll just have to get through two hours of driving to get there first. Goodbye! <laughs> oh, there's the car. <laughs> the owner of this place, Guy, is such a nice guy. <laughs> he totally cleared off the car for me, and uh, the plow just came by on the road which is great. So I think this magical snow will turn to rain very soon as I head south to some mapley goodness wonderland. Handling it like a pro. This is a winter wonderland. I'm only gonna drive 20 kilometers per hour. <laughs> I can definitely feel the tires losing traction like constantly but um, going slow and there's no one else on the road and I read one of the most important things is to remain calm so uh, that's what I'm doing it's just a little icy trying to chill it's fine a jeep that is completely off the road in a snowbank there's someone pulled over helping them and I don't even know what I could do anyway but like that was super freaky <sighs> oh my god this is terrifying that there's this like tiny car super hot on my tail you can tail me all you want fool I'm not going faster than this okay now I'm on a major major highway bound for Montreal Continue on auto route 25 south for 31 kilometers <laughs> and um, the rain has basically stopped. The road is just wet. I don't think it's icy or anything. And so I'm breathing a lot easier now. And I'm kind of proud of myself for getting through that <laughs> without uh, crashing into a snowbank. I still have several days to go, but feels I, I know I can do it now. So that feels good. All right, so I'm finally here. The rest of the drive was uneventful, thankfully at something called a sugar shack, which is basically maple heaven. Making maple syrup should be simple. It's just taking what the tree gives you without adding anything. And yet that doesn't make it easy. The way to harvest it used to be collecting the maple water from each individual tree during a short window of time after winter, but before spring officially arrives. At Herablier Bernard, they have a tubing system that connects all of the trees using water and propulsion to harvest the maple without having to go to each individual tree. This here is some of the maple water. You gotta cook it because this is coming from the ground, there's bacteria, but then after it's cooked down, it makes delicious maple syrup. There's another part to this tradition called maple taffy, which is cooked at a higher temperature that creates a thicker consistency. It's super, super sweet. And then they put it on snow, you roll it up with the stick, and it's heaven. Yeah! Oh my gosh, this one's gonna be so thick. <laughs> yes. I tried to only take half, they said that's not allowed. <laughs> Mmm. That is so good. It was so cool to be able to see some of the behind the scenes here, especially at a sixth generation female owned maple farm. Ooh, I'm like maple syrup wasted now. So normally they have something called a sugar shack here where there's like music and people hanging out and there's a fire, but apparently it was pouring rain here. So they didn't do it today, which is sad, but 
what can you do? C'est la vie. I freaking love maple syrup. I cook with it. I use it as my sweetener. I put it on everything. So I definitely bought some stuff at the gift shop too. And now I'm gonna head to the hotel, maybe take a hike and relax. Okay, so I checked in. I had a shower, but I was thinking I kind of want more of like another Sugar Shack experience. So I'm gonna head out and um, head to another one right now. So I headed to the Caban du Pic Bois to meet Andre, the fourth generation owner of a more traditional maple product. We'd like to get the full development uh, of the taste. We're still doing it as a traditional, so we cook all the sap. It's so steamy in here. Chew, chew the 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 stove on the stove. So uh, that's why we'd like to produce the best maple syrup in the world. He still does it the old-fashioned way, keeping buckets at each tree going out and collecting them, and then wood firing an oven to boil the maple for hours. The free sauna experience. <laughs> the maple sauna, you could charge a lot for this. He says this makes it taste amazing, so I had to find that out for myself. I really want to, to buy some, so I'm gonna taste test three different kinds to see which one I want. I will begin with the maple vinegar. Okay, vinegar, what? Yeah. There's maple vinegar? Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, unique product that we have here. I don't know how to even describe the flavor. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's unique. It's unique. It's earthy. Yes. It's tart. This is the golden one. This one is from last year. The dark one. Yeah. Wow. It yeah. tastes like childhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I got another treat. Getting to taste the in-between when the maple water has been heated but not yet strained to create maple syrup. He said there's no real translation for this, but to suffice to say, it was delicious, like a maple tea. Yeah, this is like a harvest so season boiling type of opportunity. Maybe 20, 20 days in a year. Oh, only like 20 days in a year yeah. you can get this. Yeah. Wow, my timing was good. <laughs> it's a little bit of a, a contrast to the other one. He's very focused on the tradition and the flavor, which is really cool but I'm glad that I got to see both ways that it can be done and to be here when he's boiling to watch him doing it. Um, I have to say the maple syrup here is really good. I bought two because I couldn't decide between them. So the, the flavors are really different uh, between the dark and the golden, but really, really nice. You guys, I don't know if I've had that much sugar since childhood all at once. <laughs> Good night. Tomorrow we're going to the mountains. Here I am. Uh, this is the part where sometimes it gets stressful. <laughs> so the snow or whatever this is, ice is just like coming down now and there's no view anywhere. But even if there was, I can't get to the summit and you're not allowed to drive up. So either you have to hike, which I don't have time for anymore today, or yeah, you don't go. <laughs> The difference I feel between now and like two and a half weeks ago is huge. <laughs> I can barely breathe because my organs are all being like squished like crazy, including my lungs. I'm like so hot right now. I think I might take this jacket off. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to. Oh, I feel so pathetic right now. about the cutest little outhouse I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, now that I think I did most of the climbing, <laughs> I can appreciate that this is so nice and peaceful and not crowded at all. Look at these frosty trees. Okay, so I've come to sort of the viewpoint for this trail and there it is. Some dusting up on the mountain up there. I think it's all downhill from here. <laughs> oh yeah. Glad I'm not going up this. Hello, squirrel friend. Hello. Oh, goodbye. I did it. That shit is humbling. <laughs> okay. Dude, taking. Ah! 
taking off and putting on snowshoes with a uh, like bowling ball strap to your front is interesting. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. They're gonna take me up to the summit. They're gonna drive me up there. Super, super nice of them. <laughs> this car is ready to go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and everything on these trees. It's like magical. This looks like R2-D2 or something. <laughs> well, thank you so much. My pleasure. That was such a cool experience. <laughs> I'm in my hotel now like two miles down the road. Yeah, it was just so cool how the manager there was like, let me just take you up in the truck to the top so that you can see it. And it was so magical. And I did get like amazing photos up there and it was just so cool to see it. And under normal circumstances, I probably would have hiked it, but just goes to show that like, whenever you think any everything's like going wrong, it's not gonna work out. I feel like it always finds a way. It always does. Someone always shows up, always at the 11th hour. It's been my experience through all of my travels that when things look bad, they can always be redeemed. white knuckle driving experience <laughs> or maybe not maybe it's been plowed that would be sweet this driveway is just straight up snow but i'm not on this for too long i really learned from last time just go exceedingly slow and a little slide is not a huge deal this is a lot better like there's some snow but for the most part i'm wheels on asphalt and it's wet rather than icy and it's a winter wonderland right now all around me so I appreciate that too. Okay it's COVID test time so I can go home I have this like proctored exam like self-exam I can do at home but someone's watching me on here. This is what I did to get into Canada and that's what I'm gonna do to get out. This is one of those tests you don't want to fail so <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Woohoo! I'm not pregnant. <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Feels really good, honestly, to be returning this car in one piece. I was so worried about this the whole like weeks leading up to this, and I'm so happy that I did it. <laughs> I drove in the snow. Wow. In the car rental area. That's the airport just behind me. Oh. Another solo trip in the books. I don't know <laughs> how many more of these, if any, I have in my future, any of my, my near future. Um, yeah, I'm super relieved to be finished, to be alive, <laughs> to not have crashed a brand new car. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more solo trips, watch one of these next. Thank you guys so much for being here. Until next time.